Good afternoon, everybody. We are here with Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, former DG Infantry, former DGMO, a hardcore paratrooper, and what better than a subject which has been the absolute talk of the country, I will not say talk of the town, talk of the country, the tour of duty, and as the government would like to call it, Agnipat. Sir, what is this Agnipat? What is this tour of duty? Uh, Agnipath, uh, as uh, as we see it, it's not been officially. There's nothing out actually, uh, not among the sources also. Uh, they're changing the recruitment pattern and the terms and condition of service for the uh, soldiers, sailor, air corps. Uh, now the soldier, sailor, air warriors who will come in uh, will train for six months, serve for three and a half years, four years service. Thereafter, 25 percent of them will get selected. Uh, and so for another uh, tenure of let's say 15, 16 years or whatever it is, after a break in service. So that's first four years service not counted. Uh, I think what we are doing is uh, uh, nothing, I, I see no good in it whatsoever. Uh, it is hitting at the very uh, vibrant ethos and the strength of the Indian Armed Forces. Uh, we need to think it over. Uh, these are things which are not reversible uh, once you hit it at the sense. So this needs to be really thought about before so before we continue, mm -hmm. I would like to understand one thing that uh, does it happen somewhere else in the world? Do the militaries of the world have this sort of a pattern somewhere? Yes, uh, they, they do have. Uh, Israel is one of them. Uh, they, they have this uh, sort of compulsory what we call prescription. Uh, they, the PLA, China has it, the Russians have it, even the Americans had in Vietnam. Uh, but other than, you know, there, there are different situations. You cannot. Uh, pick it up a tour of duty and put it in the Indian context. Indian context is totally different. Our security challenges are totally different. The wave function is different. Uh, Israel is a nation 9 million. So nation 9 million is what? It's like something like lesser property in Delhi. So uh, much lesser property in Delhi itself or the NCR. So we cannot, they, their threat levels are totally different. The survival is at stake. Uh, they have, uh, they have an organization different. Uh, but in our case, things are different. We have, uh, for every report, we have over a thousand volunteers at time in the United States. So we should be looking at our strengths, consolidating our strengths, and improving upon our weaknesses. It's not that we uh, degrade our strengths and try to improve our weaknesses. So this, I think the, the, what the essence I get is everyone feels, and I don't know why everyone feels, that the defense budget uh, is being eaten up 50% by the pay and allowance and the pensions. The pensions are far too many. And we want to re reduce the pensions. No, that can't be the aim. In the end, it is combat effectiveness, uh, which is the aim. Uh, it is not cost effectiveness, it is combat effectiveness. And it's not only cost effective, but cost efficient. You're going to cost effective, but we are looking for cost efficiencies at the cost of combat effectiveness. And we should understand that we have life situations along our borders. Uh, we have China actually breathing down our, uh, the Himalayas. Uh, we have Pakistan. And we have a conjoined Pakistan China nexus, as we call it. Right? And this turmoil and turbulence, which we are likely to create uh, by the Agnipats getting Agni views for four years, uh, I think this will be an incorrect step because we fight as soldiers, we fight for our Nam Nam uh, the Izzat uh, of the regiment, the Izzat of the unit, uh, the Izzat of uh, my, um, my colleagues, uh, their, their well being. Their safety is more important to me. I'll give my life, but make sure that uh, nothing comes, uh, nothing adverse happens to my colleagues. Uh, but a man who's on tour of duty is looking over his shoulders. Uh, like you asked me, China. Let, let's say China, for example, they have 40 conscripts. Now, conscripts cannot go technical arms because it takes, it takes time to train them, retain them. So they're in frontline units. So what we see uh, of the PLA uh, along the line of actual control, and I've served there, and most of us have seen them, uh, their motivation levels are low because he's looking at a turnover. Every 40% uh, conscripts, so every six months, uh, you find about 15%, 10 to 15% turnover. So there's no role definition. There's no sense of belonging. There's no sense of ownership uh, like we have. If I'm born into a unit, I'm commissioned to a unit, I've uh, been returned to a unit, I stayed there for a lifetime. A Subhadamiya retired after 32 years of service. A CO does over 20, 21, 20 years of service. 
a jawan normally does about 20 years service so that is my family that is everything my being is that my ownership is that i have belong to that sense of belonging and i fight for the naam namak nisham so i think we are uh, now uh, trying to change that for whatever reasons and not for whatever reason for the reasons of reducing tensions the one thing which uh, you know has been coming up into the mind is the youngsters you know we've been talking to uh, you know men above 18 who just become you know boys who just become men and uh, you know one thing is not very clear uh, everybody you know half of the population feels that it's not compulsory so it's not comp- uh, it's not conscription and uh, at the tour of duty or agnipat as it's going to be called will be absolutely voluntary like the present army we have definitely not conscription it is not conscription at all by any any this thing i'm just giving example of uh, where where in pla conscript comes at source for two years and the agni will suffer four years that's only difference the point is that it is not a profession for him right he is not there for the long term is not a, there in, his life is not invested in that unit his life is not invested in that job you know soldiering is all about passion it's not a profession there's not a passion in war especially among our soldiers among our men among the villages they go to he is looked upon he is he is he is a sort of a the is a big get we have to live up to that pedestal of uh, people who place their uh, trust in us the confidence in us the nation places the confidence in us so i am bound to make sure that I don't let down my people my nation my unit so today if i am there for only 4 years uh, and uh, when i when a jawan joins the unit uh, whether it's an infantry unit or armor unit a mech infantry unit or uh, combat support arms uh, or a submarine or a ship he takes about 4 to 5 years of training and being on the job to develop the right skills the right knowledge the right attitude you know attitude is equally important it's not only skill and knowledge so now what we are saying is in 4 years in 6 months i will give him the skill the knowledge what will the attitude come from the skills the the knowledge skill attitude takes time and time and attitude are proportional right so we are from the attitude but the, the fact is what is the strength of the indian armed forces it is the never set attitude that is what we are now trying to attack so in this case so when we have it functional will it uh, fill the deficit which is there existing in the indian army at the moment at so the junior level you know like that has been you know, last two years because of covid and uh, we not had recruitment and uh, the amount of requests one gets to uh, for all those who are qualified in all the tests less the uh, cet the command interest test uh, they are waiting to be enrolled and there have been cases uh, uh, but that's not the issue i'm not looking at the immediate term i'm looking at the at the mid to long term you know uh, uh, we fight why do we fight what drives us to fight what, what drives us to effectiveness what what drives uh, a man like uh, captain vikram batra to say dil mange mo after a attack which he has done in the high field and he said dil mange mo what drives him? That, that is the ultimate no that, what drives him is his passion that drives a sense of belonging he would do anything with certain jacker that's the reason so today when a soldier comes in and he knows that he is there for four years and he may or may not get selected 75% is a lot of rejection rate and after 75 were rejected he goes back to his village and everyone who is to the fail again so he go back rejected rejected man which is also not good and if we think you know corporate sector will absorb him and he'll get a second job why we not absorbing those our people who have 17 experience and go to the civil street so many of my old colleagues come to me saab nokri dilao do they think i'm a general i will help them and possibly i can't help them a few yes mostly no so a man and they are looking for a job with dignity i can get them a security guard job but that's not dignified job at all in the sense for someone who's done 20 years service so uh, we know we know what it is we are we should be looking at the long term don't in the old saying let me not you know with the cliche if it can go don't fix it so i i don't see why we're doing it just to save on pensions it's penny wise and pound foolish right sir and sir uh, you know also one factor which comes to my mind is that uh, you know you the youngster always is in the palton palton 90% is uh, you know in uh, areas which are hard now he knows that after 3 years he has to go away now once he knows that why 
at the stage of two and a half years, will he go to a RR or go to the Paltan or, you know, I mean, why will he just do it? So aren't we creating uh, something which is, uh, you know, it's, it's very odd when you, when you think of it, but aren't we creating something where we are not creating the feeling of, you know, uh, yes, this is what I have to do. And uh, nothing is more important, neither life nor death. So, I, I think you hit, that. I think you hit the nail on the head. Risk aversion. Soldier, soldier is all about high risk. Right. So now you have a soldier who is risk averse. He doesn't want to take risks. So an RR, in any case, even today an RR, and is being quoted, because it's not only the Agni Path scheme, uh, we also disturbing the regimental ethos. It will be pan India, all India, all class. I, I belong to the parachute regiment, all India, all class, fine. But don't give my example because parachute regiment is all about volunteers from the voluntary force. The largest voluntary army in the world is Indian Army. And from the largest voluntary army of, let's say, 1.2 million, we select 20%, who all those volunteers, 20 were selected. So let's not give the example on the all class, right? There is history, there is culture, there is tradition. And that tradition carries on. We talk about British tradition. I'm not talking about British traditions. The, uh, our soldiers who laid down uh, their lives in the Second World War, they didn't do it for British India. Please, they did not do it. For, they did it for the units. If Saragadi was fought, it was a Chhattis Sikh. It, it was not for the Highlanders or the you know uh, some other regiment. They fought for 36 Sikh, Chhattis Sikh. So we have to understand that. Second World War, where did they fight? They fought for the regiment. Because they belong to the same village, they go, they belong to the same region, they go back. And there, when they go back, they said, Ye, ye to buzdil hai. He's a coward. He's not accepted in society. No one will marry him. No one will marry his family. Right? That he, he's brought shame to the family. So that is our culture. You know, old civilization linkages are there. So let's not look at, you know, it's a British thing, we need to destroy it. If it is British origin, if it is good, why destroy it? You don't go around destroying the railway to the British building, to the post office system the British building. So why are we destroying this? It's a good system. And I was a DJ infantry. Number of senior officers who came visiting India from foreign armies, all they wanted to know was how does the regiment system work? They study our regimental system. So today we want to break it. And all, you know, the Agni weaves, where do they come? You, uh, do you feel that in three years or four years of service, a man with expert to repair tanks, to service uh, helicopters, to service aircraft, to service submarines, to service ships, engines. Two aircraft are going down because of bad maintenance. And your budget has again gone for a six. Whatever you save, you spend that. Two aircraft lives. So uh, have we thought about it? How, how, I don't understand. How do you train a good technician in four years? It is beyond my, it is beyond my competition. It is not going to happen. Four years is nothing. If it was so most, you know, organization the world over, what are the biggest challenges for high tech organizations? It is retention, recruitment, retention of quality manpower. We have the quality manpower to recruit among the many. We, we, it is not prescription. We train them and we retain them. The cost of training. I was hearing on a news channel, India Today, uh, India TV, that in 10 years, 5 crore rupees I don't know where he gets his figures from. I think that in 10 years, he gets his figures from. देश को तो बचा कर रखा है चार साल में 80 लाख लगेगा नो डोंट डोंट लुक एट द मनी लुक एट द वैल्यू फॉर मनी इफ आई हैव टू ट्रैवल फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए टू पॉइंट बी आई कैन गो ऑन अ बाइसिकल आई विल बी द सेम प्लेस आई कैन गो ऑन अ कार आई विल बी द सेम प्लेस आई कैन गो ऑन अ हाई टेक कार आई विल बी द सेम प्लेस सो व्हाई शुड आई वेस्ट मनी ऑन अ हाई टेक कार और कार लेट मी टेक अ साइकिल एंड गो इट्स सेम मनी but it's, it is not so. You see, after value for money, if I buy something from home, I, I see value for money. I see the money and I see the value for it and it sees efficiency and there's long term investing dividends. I don't see it as costing extra amount of money, so I will not take it. If I can, I'll have to take it. I will see lifetime costs and lifetime costs, the Indian soldier, and it's a challenge anyone can disprove me on that, costs the minimum, delivers the maximum, the world over. No soldier in the world costs as less as Indian soldier. Right, sir. I think that is you know one point which really needs to be thought over. And uh, one thing which we, uh, of course, before we wind up, and uh, I thought 
you know, it will be good for everybody to know that uh, when the government is thinking of uh, Agnipat, why only the army, sir? Why not the uh, Air Force and the Navy? Sir? I, I'm not too sure. That's what they call Navy also. Uh, I, I think it's all over. And, and, and if it's only for the army, I, I hope at least we'll have an effective Air Force and Navy. So I don't grudge it. I don't grudge it. Honestly. At least Air Force and Navy will be effective. I, I, I don't want a submarine or a ship going down. Right. Right. Well, I, I think it is incorrect totally. Because the cost of the, of the sailor, soldier, air warrior is similar. The pension... No, we have 500,000 civilian employees paid from the Ministry of Defense. It was 6,000 earlier. After the war, he has been optimized at sort of 500,000. Why not looking at that? Optimize that. The, by the way, the defense uh, pension budget is going down. It's not going up. It's not ballooning. It's a, it's a wrong thing. Look at the figures, the allocations of uh, 2021 and 2021-22, because the NPS has set in for the civil employees, and they take 35% of the defense pensions. Now they're in NPS, so it will keep coming down. We have to afford security. If you can't afford security, you don't have security. We, but if territorial integrity is not negotiable, please. So let's have an effective army, which is maybe a little costlier, but let us look at cost effectiveness. Let us look at combat effectiveness, not the outgoes of money only. Sorry, right. I'm a little emotive. Soldier, all about emotion. Right. So absolutely, sir. I agree with you absolutely. And uh, we're just waiting and watching. And, uh, you know, because these are decisions which are policy decisions and uh, to be accepted as and when the announcements are made. But I'm very sure that government has got its own share of feedback from experts who've, been, who've lived their lives in the Army, Navy, Air Force, and also that their opinions do matter, sir. And uh, let's wait and watch, sir. We are really waiting to see what happens on this front. And uh, meanwhile, sir, thank you very much for sparing your time and, you know, telling us what you exactly think about this thing because yes we want the you know young generation of the country to be a part of the forces but then we also want the value for money like you said and we also want them to get the feel of being there for the nam and nishan which uh, you know we don't know how much a short term tenure knowing fully well that it's going to end very soon and in a uh, in not a benefit of a pension and also not in the, uh, not being considered if you decide to continue. So I think all these things need to be thought about, sir. Thank you very much for clearing so many of our doubts, sir. Thank you very much. My thanks to Aviation Defense Universe. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure being on your platform. Thank you indeed. Jai. Jai, sir.